If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you know that I use Frigate with my CCTV cameras for local AI image recognition. I started using it a few years ago because I was sick of getting motion notifications every time the wind blew the leaves on the trees. I only wanted to be notified when there was something worth notifying me about. Although a lot of manufacturers now offer person and other object detection features on their video cameras and doorbells, I really don't like having to send all my video up to some company's cloud servers for them to be processed. Frigate runs on my home server and watches my security cameras to see if any people, cats or dogs have been detected inside specific zones that I've marked out for my property. A home assistant automation then sends really accurate notifications with thumbnails and short video clips to my phone whenever a person walks up to my front door or when a fox starts playing in my back garden. I previously made a whole bunch of videos about how I use Frigate in my smart home and how I've tweaked it to get the best results. In those videos, I installed Frigate on my old Docker setup, but in this new home, I moved away from using Docker and switched to Proxmox for my home server. So I set out to find the best way to install Frigate on my new server so that it operated just as fast as it did when I ran it on Docker and it needed to be able to use my USB Coral TPU, which significantly speeds up the AI recognition. Now it took quite a bit of fiddling around, but I managed to get it working and stable with an inference speed of under 10 milliseconds. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. A lot of people have requested that I make this video. So let's dive in and take a look. This is another one of those really technical videos. You know the ones, with all the config files and Linux commands that you need to type into a shell. To make it a bit easier for you all, I've put together a step-by-step -step article on my Home Automation Guy website that lists out all of the commands and configuration files that I use in my setup. The idea is that you can watch this video to see the full end-to-end -end process so you know what you're getting yourself into, and the article is there for you to reference later on when you actually go and set this up for yourself. This video is just going to show you how to set up Frigate on Proxmox. It won't go into the details about how to actually set up and tweak Frigate. I've already covered that in previous videos, so go check out the Frigate playlist that I've got on my YouTube channel if you want to know more about that. The article and the playlist are all linked in the description below. The goals that I wanted to achieve were to get Frigate back up and running in my new house, the same way as it had been running on my old house. I also wanted to be able to take advantage of the hardware acceleration in my CPU and my USB Coral TPU to process the video clips. My new home server runs on Proxmox, so it would be a little bit different to what I was previously doing on Docker. After a bit of research and reading, I figured that the best way to do this was to run an LXC on my Proxmox server and run Docker inside that. I could then run Frigate on top of Docker. Sure, it sounded pretty stupid to be running Docker containers on top of LXCs, that's a lot of layers of abstraction, and I had no idea what the performance impact of doing that would be. But after running it for the last three months, I can assure you that it's been working really fast, even with four high definition camera streams. To get started, you need to create a new LXC on Proxmox to run your Docker containers in. The easiest way I found to do this was to go to my favorite Proxmox helper script repository on GitHub and use the Docker LXC creator script. Open up an SSH session to your Proxmox server or use the browser-based shell available in the Proxmox console and paste in the script. This will start the creation of a new LXC container. Follow the prompts on screen and select advanced mode instead of the default mode when you're asked. Go through and answer the questions in the same way as I have. Choose Debian for your operating system. I chose the latest version, which was version 12, also known as Bookworm then choose to create a privileged container. I'm pretty sure this is required to map through the access to the hardware acceleration capabilities and the USB TPU, but I could be wrong. Also, I'm pretty privileged and I acknowledge that. Set a password for the root account of the container. Leave the container ID as default, but make a note of it. We're gonna need it later. Give the container a name. Now give it some disk space. I chose four gigabytes for my container because I don't actually plan on storing any video clips or recordings inside the container itself. My Proxmox server has two fat hard disks in it that are mirrored, and I use those disks to store any important things on. I'll be mounting a directory from that storage into the container itself and storing the clips inside there. This means that they're also accessible from a network share, and I can back them up to another device somewhere for safekeeping. 
I'll show you how to mount this directory in later. But if you're planning to store your clips inside the LXC container itself, then I recommend adding far more disk space here. I found that two cores were more than enough for Frigate, but I did increase the available memory to eight gigabytes. I left the bridge as default, and then allocated a static IP address to the container. Don't forget to put the slash 24 at the end, or whatever is suitable for your home network. Fill in the rest of your networking settings as they make sense to you, and you're almost done. I chose no to enabling ZFS fuse overlays, mainly because I have no fucking idea what it means. When you've finished, it will start creating that new container for you. Once again, all the things I entered into this creation wizard are listed on that article I wrote, so you can go and follow along on that if you want to set it all up for yourself. When it asked me if I wanted to install Portainer and Docker Compose, I said yes, as they're really useful tools. Now once the script is finished, I opened up a new browser window and navigated to the IP address of the LXC with port 9000, and saw that Portainer was up and running. This is how you know that everything has worked as expected up to this point. You now have yourself an LXC container with Docker installed on it. You can use this same method to create a container for anything you want to run on Docker. You can even run whole stacks of Docker containers on one of these LXCs, so you don't need to create a new one each time. You're now about halfway there. Next up, I'm going to map through a directory from the fat hard disks in my server through to the container itself for storing video footage that Frigate creates. If you want to know more about how I've configured my Proxmox server, including all the various storage options, you should check out the video I made about it. It shows you why I chose the server I did and how I went about building it. Either way, I have a ZFS mirror called Data mounted on my Proxmox host. Inside that data volume, I created a new directory called CCTV Clips, and that is where I plan on storing my video footage. To map this folder into my container, I run the pct set command in the shell or console of the Proxmox host. You need to pass in the container ID of your new Docker LXC container into this command, and the paths to the directories you want to mount. Here you can see that I'm mounting the CCTV clips directory into a mount point called CCTV clips into container 108. You will probably have a different container ID. Once the command is run, we can validate that it worked by going to that particular container in the Proxmox user interface and going to the resources section, and you should see it listed in there. Now we need to map through access to the CPU hardware acceleration and the USB Coral TPU. To do that, we go back to the shell of the Proxmox server and navigate to the slash etc slash pve slash lxc directory. This is where the Proxmox configuration for our lxc containers live. We need to use the nano text editor to edit the configuration for our container, 108. What we'll do here is paste a couple of extra lines to the bottom of this file. These are both available in the article that I've linked in the description below, and you should be able to just copy and paste them from there. The first line maps through the hardware acceleration for my Intel i5 CPU, and the second line maps through the USB devices that are plugged into the host through to the container. Save that file and reboot the container for good measure. We can now go into the console for that container itself and create our Docker Compose file to spin up Frigate inside a Docker container inside this LXC. I always store my Docker stuff in this slash opt directory, so I navigate to that directory inside my LXC container and create a new directory to store my Frigate stuff. I then use the nano text editor to create a new Docker Compose YAML file and paste in the configuration for Frigate. From here on in, it's pretty much the same process as running Frigate on any Docker environment, and you can find this config in the article I mentioned. Firstly, I've mapped the USB and hardware acceleration through from the LXC container to the Docker container, and you can see that I've mapped through a configuration directory from the slash opt slash Frigate directory and the CCTV clips mount point from my host server. Save the file, but before we can start her up, we need to create a basic Frigate configuration file. I start by creating the config directory, and then I create a config YAML file inside of that. This basic configuration file is built on the getting started guide, and I've also put it in my article. The goal here is just to make sure that it works end to end, and I can see it processing videos and using the hardware acceleration and Coral TPU. We can work on tweaking it and setting it all up properly later, you will need to create your own configuration file based on your own camera setup. 
save the config file, exit nano, and then navigate back to the opt directory to run the docker compose up hyphen d command to start frigate. Of course, make sure you spell it correctly. Once the container has started, you should be able to go back to Portainer and see it running. Here you can also check the logs to make sure that everything is working properly. Then, assuming it all is, you can go to the IP address of your LXC with port 5000, and hopefully you'll see your video stream in the Frigate web interface. There you go, Frigate, running on Docker, running on an LXC, running on Proxmox. As I mentioned, I've been running it this way with four camera streams for three months, and it's been flawless, just as good as it was when I was running it at my old house on my Intel NUC with Docker. You will now need to go in and set up all your cameras and tweak them to get the best results, and then why not integrate it into Home Assistant? I cover all of that in my Frigate playlist and the other articles, which are all linked in the description below. Whilst you're down there, please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. And if you're feeling super generous, I would really appreciate a super thanks, which lets you donate money to my channel so I can continue to make videos like this in the future. Or you can subscribe to the channel for free and get notified when I release new videos. And then together we can make your home smarter.